What's up guys, welcome back. Today's video wasn't originally on the plan, but I do have some things to do today and I figured I might as well bring you along uh, just for the sake of documenting it. My friend Nathan Christian shows up in just over a day to pick the E24 up and get that up to California. He's hauling a two car bumper pull trailer and my yard just is too tight with too much grade in the driveway to get that trailer in here and load a car that doesn't run. But I fly up to New York at 5 a.m. on Tuesday and Nathan is supposed to show up at some point Tuesday. So unfortunately, we are just going to miss each other. So I won't be able to help him load the car or even get a chance to see him. Now, since my yard isn't really set up to have a trailer that length in here and load a car that doesn't run, I had a few different options in mind uh, to help him load it easier since he'll be here alone. He does have a winch on his trailer, so that'll help significantly and the six series rolls freely and the tires hold air. So what I've decided to do is I still have Mason's open car aluminum trailer here that he let me borrow for the Fort Myers trip to Euro Tripper in Florida. And I still need to get that down uh, to Dalton, Georgia, where his shop is to leave it off. At that shop, there's a long driveway, it's off the road, there's plenty of open space, plenty of space for Nathan to turn a trailer around and it's only 30 minutes south of Chattanooga. So what I've decided to do is kill two birds with one stone, load the E24 up onto Mason's trailer and get them both down to Dalton. Now the E24 doesn't run and Mason's trailer doesn't have a beaver tail to it. So there is a little bit of an aggressive pitch from the ramps to the trailer. Uh, obviously you can manipulate that angle in many ways. You can back your truck up onto some blocks to angle the trailer down. Or if you have to, you can utilize the trailer jack to push on some blocks while it's hooked up to the truck to get your trailer angle, or you can just modify how you extend your ramps out. I think it's gonna be a combination of a few of those things, and I'm gonna wait on a few friends, including Mason, to show up here uh, in just over an hour to help me push that car onto the trailer. Also this morning, just finished up a job of 100 leather key rings for my good friends at Classic Auto Works. Uh, that is my friend Sam Cole and my friend Johan uh, from Switzerland, the France side. These are really cool. Yeah, the detail is great in these. Getting the laser to engrave into the leather that intricately is usually a feat, but when you get it to come out just the way you want it to with the definition, super stoked on these. The detail is great. And being leather, they only get better. It's like that old saddle or that old baseball mitt or the old belt you have. They only get better. This is like the worst condition they'll ever be in when they're brand new. So that's what's cool about the leather key rings. Super stoked uh, to be working with friends from all over the world on stuff like that. So great appreciation to those guys. So as I've mentioned in a few other episodes, uh, Riverside Chattanooga is coming up first week of April. That's a show that Mason puts on and I have spent the last, I think five years hauling down from New Hampshire. A couple years I flew and a few years I trailered a car down, but this is the first year that I am a Chattanooga resident and literally living a few miles away. So I vended last year and that was a monumental feat simply because I hauled my enclosed trailer down from New Hampshire uh, with my booth set up and a car and it's about a 20 to 22 hour drive. I wasn't too sure if I was gonna vend, but I just have to take advantage of being this close to where the show is held now. I wasn't sure if I wanted to vend with the Governor's Club, uh, which is my automotive clothing brand or just automotive brand in general uh, that I've had since about 2011, 2012, so it's been about 10 years now. But I'm pushing Ludwig's Garage far harder because it's it's me, it's not something I uh, was trying to create. It's the cars I love, it's uh, the podcast. It's me, basically, and my passion. So I just designed and ordered a whole new tent setup, a Ludwig's Garage tent setup, whole new tent canopy, flags, table covers, uh, the whole lot. So I'm really excited to be there as Ludwig's Garage, I'll have the Century, the 700 and the Corvair there. I've been talking with Josh from Like Hell in England, and we've got a really, really cool shirt design, something that I've wanted to do for the past few years now. Uh, I really hope we can make it happen in time. He's booked out, as you could imagine. He does a lot of work for a lot of big people in the industry, but really excited about some stuff on the burners that I'll have available at Riverside and then online after the show. This episode is brought to you by Wheel Price. 
the Wheel Classifieds app designed by automotive enthusiasts. Buy and sell your wheels on the app today, which is downloadable for free through the links in the video's description below. Available for iOS products and Android devices. So if you've been searching for that dream set of wheels that you can't find anywhere else in that specific offset or size, make sure to download the Wheel Price app and set your notifications on and get push notifications to your mobile phone the second that those wheels are listed. All right, so as you can see, I've got the truck and trailer pulled down over like an extreme like downhill in my driveway uh, to put the trailer basically on a downhill right up against the trailer. I'm gonna try to just do this myself just because there's still a few more hours until a couple of the guys can swing over and help me do this. So I've got the six series pulled out. I had it sitting off the pavement here, so I got it pulled up onto the concrete. It's really not too much. It's a little uphill right here, but I've got my, my riding lawnmower that I might, I might be able to pull it along to about right here where this seam is, where it starts to go downhill. Get the ramp set up, get everything lined up, and then basically push the car. The e-brake does work in that car, so I can use that to slow it down. So we'll see how it goes. Worst case scenario, uh, if it becomes too much to handle for just one person, I've at least got everything set up so when the boys swing by, we can push it right on, no problems. All right, so I've got it pushed out by hand out to the middle of the driveway. Got the ratty lawnmower, which uh, is Andy's, not mine. Uh, I've got that running since that's been outside all winter. And I'm going to attempt to just pull it foot by foot right to this seam to where then hopefully gravity can do the rest. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. So I'm getting pretty lined up. I'm pretty close to the ramps. I'm just kind of using the space I have left to kind of finesse the steering a little bit, make sure it's all lined up by the time it gets to the ramps. All right, it's on. <laughs> it's on, and it ultimately came down to just putting my terribly injured back into it. But it's on. I know what most of you guys are probably thinking. No, I don't have a come along here, like a cable come along. I don't have any snatch blocks with cable for that come along, which means I could go to the front of my trailer and then to the lawnmower up on the pavement and drive away while pulling the BMW on. As I've mentioned in previous episodes, my father owned a towing company for 40 some odd years and so I grew up rigging things and uh, that's all his equipment and I am still in the process of furnishing all of my own equipment. So not having a come along or even a winch on the trailer, it's not my trailer. So uh, this is a prime example of having a single car open trailer with a winch on it and how you can be a one man operation and get things done. But for today, I was able to utilize uh, geography and some physics and some good old elbow grease and I didn't blow my back out so I'm thankful for that. All right so there's been a question between Sutton and I as to whether or not this is the original M90. Uh, the M90s were available in the 635 CSI cars up until I believe 81. They were only available in the early 635 Euro cars only um, and they look much like an M30. Uh, they are I believe it's a larger bore, smaller stroke block, and I think they use the same heads. Uh, I can't remember. The wild card on this motor, or on this car, is that it's got a Motronic injection on it, and that's not the injection that the early M90s had on it. So Sutton kind of threw that flag up. But upon reading a little bit further into the internet, I found that guys with 81 635 CSI cars from Europe uh, do have an M90 with Motronic from the factory. So it sounds like 81 may be an only year M90 with Motronic 
in a Euro 635. Leave in the comments below if you guys know more than I do about this or if you just want to speculate on what's in this. I've got some photos of the block finally. Now that I got it up on the trailer, I was able to get underneath it a little bit easier. I've uh, got some numbers. Some of those numbers are bringing up M30s on the internet, but that doesn't mean this isn't an M90. I do know there's a water jacket on the left side of the block that runs from like cylinder one to cylinder five, apparently, which is a giveaway for the M90, as well as an L uh, painted on the driver's side, the left side of the block. So I haven't been able to put eyes on an L or the water jacket yet. We definitely will when it gets out to Sutton's in California. That's when we'll know for sure if this is an M90. Until then, leave in the comments what you guys think is in this car, uh, whether or not it's the original M90 with Motronic or if it's um, an M30 B35 that's been put back in this car at some point uh, in its life before it was parked in 1997. That's very likely. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me as the M90s, because of the smaller water jackets, uh, they were they tended to crack if overheated or at least that's what I've read so apparently if you ran an M90 real hot they were prone to cracking which then would have led to an M30 B35 put in this car later on down the road it doesn't look like there's any cracks in this block it's got good oil in it um, we'll find out we'll see it looks like it's had front and rear sway bars installed since it was stock as well the bushings and end links all look much newer than 1981 so those are probably aftermarket or just OEM plus added after the fact, um, which is really cool because th those will come in handy for sure when we rebuild all of the suspension. So I'm about 40 minutes out, half hour or so, uh, crossing the Georgia line now. And gonna meet Mason down there. He's down there washing his truck. So thankfully I'll have a friend there to help me get this car off. Although getting it off would be much easier than getting it on, so. Yeah, going to see Mason real quick and get this thing unloaded. All right, we're down here to Mason's in Dalton, Georgia. This is where him and his father's shop is. Uh, got backed into the driveway, straight shot all the way back to the shop. Gonna unload right in front of the door so Nathan can literally back straight up, load up, and get out of here. Can I just say that I love this truck? I love this thing. I washed it before I left. I hadn't washed it since we got home from Florida. It still needs a good paint correction. In the sunlight, you can see all sorts of swirls, but I am so stoked on this OBS Aero Nose. What's up? Hey, man. So, okay. what do you think, right here? Well, the next time I see this car, it's going to be out at Sutton Morris's shop in Northern California. Like I mentioned, Nathan comes in just a day and a half to come get this thing. And yeah, looking forward to seeing it out at Sutton's shop, getting it up on a lift and getting a chance to really kind of figure out what's under the hood of this car. If we are dealing with an M90, uh, an 81 Motronic injection M90, or if maybe along the way during its life, it was overheated and cracked a block and it had an M30 B35 put back in it. Not sure, but like I mentioned, leave in the comments what you guys think is under the hood of this car and maybe what you guys think we're going to do with this car, what the uh, overall plan might be. Either way, I'm real excited, real excited. This is going to be super fun.
That last clip was Nathan arriving in Dalton, Georgia and winching the six series onto his trailer and getting headed out towards the West Coast. After about two weeks transit, heading cross country while unloading and loading a few other vehicles aside from the six series, the car has now been delivered to Morris Motors, my friend Sutton Morris's shop in Walnut Grove, California. It landed yesterday and luckily Sutton was able to get some videos and some photos of them getting it unloaded and set up at his shop. Is out here. And it's so Huge thanks again to my friend Nathan Christian uh, at Canyon Carrying. I've put his IG handles here uh, so you guys can check him out and what he does if you need anything moved. Hopefully upcoming in March, hopefully next month I can get out there and we can start on that project. So although I've been keeping you guys on pins and needles as far as what the actual project idea is for this car, because there is more to what we're doing than just getting this car running and putting it back on the road after the last three or four years now, I've been battling with the idea of starting a Patreon simply because I wanted to be able to provide value for anybody that were to subscribe and be able to bring them along on these journeys, projects, uh, even my music, how I go about writing my music. Most of the music you hear on this channel is written and recorded by me and recorded myself here at my home studio. It's all about the automotive, it's about the cars and this YouTube channel. But basically anyone who wanted to further involve themselves in this whole process. So that is currently live. It's really hard, I think, for anybody who's genuinely an enthusiast or immersed in their passion to not feel a little bit of imposter syndrome when something like this comes along because you always, I mean, you're always second guessing your value in what you're doing and whether or not it's worth someone else's time or money. I am really excited to bring you guys along and involve some of you even more, give you guys inside looks as to potential projects, what I might be thinking about certain projects, uh, secret content, just photos, videos, give you early access to the podcast episodes, which I am hoping to get back into uh, in the next month before Riverside. I'm setting the studio up as we speak. Going to be getting back into that. Uh, and also give you guys early access to merchandise. I want to do some Patreon only merchandise and content there. I am so thankful for all of you guys' support already. Everybody that I've met on the road or at car shows or through social media platforms. For anybody that wants to support the channel or support these projects and more trips, more pop-up meets, get a chance to meet up with more of you guys on the road, it's greatly, greatly appreciated. I've got a link to the Patreon in the description of the video below, and I'm really looking forward to starting this and providing more, working harder, growing more, and learning more with you guys. I'm going to be putting as the first few posts on the Patreon what we're doing in California with the Six Series and exactly what the plan was all along, and where we're at. When I was out in Walnut Grove on the Rotiform Ludwig's Garage trip in June with Corey in the Cabrio, it's when we first started to put the gears in motion for this project. And I've got a lot of photos and videos from that trip when we were kind of putting things together. And all of that, which I've saved since last June, are going to be the first posts on the Patreon account. So again, massive, massive thank you to all of you guys who support, even just by watching or subscribing to the channel. I'm really looking forward to growing more this year. There's a lot of projects on deck. Lots of big news coming even here on the channel in the next couple of episodes. So stay tuned for that. Until then, be well, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.